So three weeks ago, I decided to give up my Samsung Galaxy Note 8, a flagship device that I absolutely adore, I heavily rely on to get me through the day. I decided to swap it out for a budget smartphone called the Mix 2. Now the Mix name is mainly associated with Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, and this is just another phone jumping on the Mix name, but is it any good? Well, I decided to find out with the ultimate test, so say hello to the All Cool Mix 2, a phone that has some good specs, and we're going to see if this thing is worth buying. So aside from the smartphone inside the box, what can you expect for your sub £160 price point? Well, I was actually pleasantly surprised. The phone itself, considering a budget smartphone, it comes really well presented, and inside you can find stuff like an adapter, which you would expect, but they also include a secondary adapter. For me, this is the UK one. We also find a bundled one meter long USB Type-C cable. Yes, this phone supports USB Type-C. That is a good starting point right there. A secondary box opens up more goodies, inside of which we can find a glass screen protector, which again saves you money. We also find inside the instruction manual, now the instruction manual is good, it's written in English and Chinese, so props again to them. A small SIM card removal tool, a crystal clear silicon case, again saves you a few bucks as well, and honestly the actual quality of this one seems to be pretty good, considering other ones that I've seen. Again, this phone does not support a headphone jack, so a USB Type-C to 3.5mm cable is also included, so that about wraps it up for the contents. So when I first decided to carry out this experiment, I was quite dubious because I've never done anything like this and I was actually worried that I wouldn't even last one week, let alone three, based on the actual hardware that I'm used to and the software. But this phone is no slouch running on an Android 7.1 operating system. The phone is powered by the very popular P23 from Helio. The octa-core CPU is clocked at 2 gigahertz a core, dedicated GPU, 6 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabyte and 128 gigabyte versions are available depending on your storage needs. 3500 milliamp battery with a standby of between three to five days depending on your usage. I got about two and a half days out of mine. Screen size on this thing, I'm gonna say six inch, but it's 5.99 if you wanna be technical, with an aspect ratio of 18 by nine. The resolution on that screen is 2160 by 1080. The rear camera is pretty awesome. It's a 16 megapixel autofocus with an aperture of f2.0. And the front camera is eight megapixel and actually supports face ID. Now obviously I wasn't expecting the All Cool Mix 2 to be on the same level or anywhere near the same level as the camera on my Galaxy Note 8, but this seems to be a lot better than other budget smartphones I've checked out. So the front selfie camera under artificial light gives you an image like this, which isn't too bad. Everything's in focus. If you apply a filter, you see a little bit of grain come into it, but using this camera in portrait mode outside, you can see the picture looks pretty damn good, except for my facial expression. So how about that main rear camera? Well, as you can see, the software does a decent job of keeping a nice flat profile. The image is sharp, it's not overexposed, and it's not oversaturated, it's just right and it's relatively sharp as well and also if you get close enough to your subject like this you can get a pretty even looking bokeh in the background as well so perfectly good for social media video quality again was relatively good and it saves like a 10 second clip will be somewhere in the region of about 60 megabytes but I did notice sometimes while I was recording the video when I played it back seemed to stutter not all the time but it does a decent job considering its low price point so when it came to battery life, I would class myself as a heavy user, and honestly, I didn't miss my Note 8. This thing had enough screen on time to get me through the day, and it could be fully charged in under three hours. So, great job, no complaints. The All Cool Mix 2 also supports wireless fast charging, but sometimes with these Chinese phones, you have to place it just right. With this one, I didn't experience any of that, just plonk it down and it starts charging. So how about the overall user experience compared against my Galaxy Note 8? Well, honestly, most of the apps that I use, like Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, all of them run absolutely superbly. And you know what? Honestly, I didn't actually miss my Note 8. The screen quality on my Note 8 is obviously a little bit sharper and a little bit brighter, but it wasn't poor enough on the All Cool Mix 2 to actually miss in terms of the games or anything like that that I would play, they seem to run pretty smooth. I even managed to get games like PUBG to run on the phone while there was a few frames missed here and there. The game was still playable, which was surprising in itself. You might notice right now that I've already cracked the glass screen protector on this phone because honestly the form factor of this phone isn't far or dissimilar to my Galaxy Note 8. It's a big phone. But what I want to talk about here is the actual fingerprint sensor. You can see on some phones when you power it off you have to push the power button then put your fingerprint on with some of these Chinese phones. This one will switch on directly from the actual standby screen with the screen off. And as you can see the fingerprint sensor is perfectly placed and it's not too bad at all. So by now you're probably thinking this is an awesome choice for a great budget smartphone. 
or for a backup phone if you don't want to take your flagship phone out on a night out or something like that. It isn't without its fault, it does have a few things, but they're not what you would think. It's not the lack of a headphone jack. While I don't actually use a plug-in headphone, I use wireless headphones, so it really didn't affect me. And it's not even the actual screen brightness when you're outside. That's not the problem either. It's not even the glare. That is something that I get on my Note 8 and that's something I get on here. And it doesn't bother me. What really bothered me was the fact that the Wi-Fi connection on this thing was not as good as I had expected. And there was plenty of times where I would have to switch the Wi-Fi on and off to get it to work. Now this is not a regular thing. So for example, in a three hour period, I'd probably do it once or twice so but even so that was just annoying the second annoyance is the speakers on this phone are as poor as any other budget smartphone from china that you can expect the it's it's not so much the quality it's more the actual volume level even if you crank up their boost setting within the actual android menu it really doesn't make any difference the audio quality is decent but the actual max volume is terrible so there you go so there you go guys, that was my experience over the last three weeks with the All Call Mix 2. And honestly, I was not disappointed and most of the time I didn't miss my Note 8. When I had to reset the constantly switch the Wi-Fi on and off, that was annoying. But one thing I forgot to mention, this phone's got a really responsive screen, full 10 point touch as well. So if you want to go check it out, link in the video description. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. My name is Mike and this is Tech404. I'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching.